This is the reading of the life and passion of the holy apostle James, the brother of the Lord. St. James was the son of St. Joseph, the betrothed of the most pure virgin. From his youth he loved the ascetic life. He never partook of butter or oil and ate nothing but bread. Neither did he drink wine or any other sort of strong drink, but only water. He did not frequent bath houses, and he disdained every comfort of the flesh. He wore a rough hair shirt upon his body and passed each night in prayer, sleeping very little. The skin on his knees became as tough as a camel's because of the numerous prostrations which he made, and he preserved his virginity undefiled unto the day of his death. The following is written concerning the name given him, the brother of God. When Joseph the betrothed divided his land among the children his first wife had borne him, he wished to give a parcel to the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of the most pure virgin, his betrothed. At that time Jesus was yet a babe, and Joseph's sons would not consent to this. Nevertheless, James agreed to give a portion of his inheritance to the Lord. Because of this, he came to be called the brother of God. This name was also given to him for the following reason. After the birth of Christ the Lord, the most pure virgin Theotokos fled with the Savior to Egypt. James departed with them at that time also, accompanying the most pure mother of God and St. Joseph his father. When the divine infant Christ Jesus reached manhood, began to teach the people of the kingdom of God, and was revealed as the true Messiah, then it was that St. James believed in him. As he hearkened unto Christ's divine words, his heart was inflamed yet more with the love of God, and he began to live a still more severe life. Moreover, it is clear that the Lord especially loved the Apostle James, his beloved brother. For after his voluntary passion and resurrection, Christ the Lord appeared separately to him, apart from the other disciples. It is of this appearance that the Apostle Paul speaks of when he says, After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. St. James was called the righteous one, for all bore witness to his righteous and God-pleasing life. He was numbered among the seventy apostles, was made a bishop, and was instructed in the performance of the sacred rites by our Lord Jesus Christ himself. The newly enlightened Church of Jerusalem was entrusted to him, and he became its first hierarch and pastor. He also composed the first liturgy, which he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Later, out of condescension toward the weakness of men, St. Basil the Great and St. John Chrysostom shortened this service. As the pastor of Christ's flock in Jerusalem, St. James led many Jews and Greeks unto God by his teaching, directing them along the path of salvation. He wrote to the twelve tribes of Israel a general epistle, which is filled with divinely inspired and exceedingly profitable teaching. This epistle is the adornment of the whole church of Christ and instructs us both to have faith and to do good works. Because of his virtuous life, St. James was held in great honor by all the faithful and unbelievers alike. The high priests of the Jews themselves entered the Holy of Holies only once a year to perform their service. But they and the priests did not forbid St. James to enter there infrequently to pray, for they saw that his life was pure and blameless. Moreover, they began to call him by another name, Obli or Ofli, which means the defense of men, or the confirmation of men, or he who is righteous above all. The saint would enter the Holy of Holies not only during the daytime, but by night as well, and falling to the floor, he would offer God prayer for the whole world. He was loved by the people for his sanctity, and many of the elders of the Jews came to believe through his teaching. All heard him gladly, and multitudes would gather about him. Some of the people wished to hear his words, while others sought merely to touch the fringe of, of his garment. Now at that time Ananias became high priest, and he, the Pharisees, and the scribes saw that all the people hearkened unto James's teaching, and that many had turned to Christ. Smitten with jealousy, they became wroth with the saint, and considered how they might do him harm and slay him. They determined to ask the saint to speak to the people, and to lead them away from Christ. If he would not consent to do this, their intention was to put him to death. As the feast of the Passover approached, people from every city and land began arriving in Jerusalem for the festival. Festus, who had delivered Paul out of the hands of the Jews, died a short time before, and a new procurator, 
had not arrived from Rome to replace him. The scribes and Pharisees gathered about St. James in the temple and said, O most venerable one, we entreat you to address the people on the day of the feast when a multitude of people will assemble here from throughout the world. Turn them away from Jesus, for they have been led astray, and say that he is the Son of God. Instruct them in the truth that they not remain in their error. We revere you and heed you, as do all the people. We are prepared to bear witness concerning you that you speak nothing but the truth and are no respecter of persons. Exhort the people then not to be deceived by Jesus, who was crucified. We ask you to go up to the summit of the temple where all can see and hear you and to speak from there. For as you see, many people have gathered together here, both Israelites and Gentiles. When they had said this, the scribes and Pharisees led James up to the pinnacle of the temple and shouted, O most righteous one, we all have trust in you. This people has gone astray and follows after Jesus, who was crucified. Tell us what you truly think concerning him. The saint cried out with a great voice, Why do you question me concerning the Son of Man, who willingly suffered, was crucified, buried, and rose from the grave on the third day? He is now seated in the heavens on the right hand of the Most High, and will come again upon the clouds of heaven to judge the living and the dead. The people rejoiced greatly when they heard James bear witness to Christ Jesus thus, and they shouted with a single voice, Glory to God, Hosanna to the Son of David. The Pharisees and scribes then muttered, We have not done well to permit James to speak of Jesus. He has only stirred up the people more. Filled with wrath, they cast James down from the summit of the temple, that all the people might fear them and be stricken with terror, and that the crowd might not believe Jesus's, sorry, James's words. The righteous one has been deceived, they cry out vehemently. When St. James struck the ground, his bones were shattered, but he remained alive. He lifted himself up on his knees, raised his hands and prayed, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge, for they know not what they do. The Pharisees and the scribes began to cast stones at the saint, further wounding him. One of the sons of Rechab then cried, Cease, the righteous one prays for you, and you stone him. Immediately one of the Pharisees took a fuller's club and fell upon the saint, striking his head with all his might and shattering it. His brains were split upon the ground, and thus the apostle surrendered his soul and martyred him unto the Lord. His sacred body was buried near the temple, and the faithful wept greatly over him. St. James was the bishop of Jerusalem for thirty years, and he was sixty-six years old when he suffered for Christ the Lord. To him be honor and glory together with the Father and the Holy Spirit unto the ages of ages. Amen. Through the prayers of St. James the Apostle, the brother of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.